establish easy. All right, so we're gonna be learning about context-free grammars and ambiguity today. So we got SIPSER 2.9 right here, and what we need to do is we need to make a context-free grammar for this particular language, and to answer whether that context-free grammar is ambiguous. Short answer, it always will be. So what is the context-free grammar for this? Well, we got I equal to J or J equal to K for the string I copies of A, B, J copies of B, and K copies of C. So here, whenever you see the word or, we can use closure under union for context-free grammars, really for the languages. But So what I'm going to do, and there are many zillions of other ways to approach this, is I'm going to have a start variable right here. So here's the start variable, and it's going to be S, where I'm going to make a little grammar that does this part and a little grammar that does this part and then go to the union of the two. And that's pretty easy. So I'm gonna call this first part S1. So S1 is gonna make this part right here. And then of course S2 is gonna make that part so that we keep things straight. So S1 or S2. So S1 is taking care of an equal number of, of A's and B's, but the number of C's is irrelevant. So as long as the number of A's and B's is the same, I don't care about the number of C's. So for S1, we need to do this. And there are other, many ways to do this too. So if we know the grammar for having an equal number of A's and B's, we're golden. So then what we can do after the fact is we can append as many C's as we want to. So, uh, so the, here's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna have uh, label these as A1, B1, where the A1 is going to make the equal number of, I, uh, of A's and B's, <laughs> equal number of A's and B's, and then the B1 variable is just gonna spat out a bunch of C's, as many as needed. So here, uh, A1 is gonna go to A, capital A1, B, or epsilon, and then B1 is just gonna go to uh, C, B1, so I can make one more C if I want to, or empty. So the A1 has an equal number of A's and B's at any point, and the B1 has, a, has as many C's as needed because it's just irrelevant. All right, so then now we will tackle S2. So let's do S2. So S2 says that we have an number, equal number of B's and C's, so then the number of A's is irrelevant. So I'm gonna have two variables, A2, B2, where A2 is gonna spat out as many A's as needed, because it's gotta go at the front according to this. That's why we put the B1 variable at the end because the C's are at the end. So here, the A2 variable is gonna make any number of A's that we want. So it's essentially the same thing as B1 except it's changing it appropriately to A and A2. All right, and then B2 is gonna be essentially identical to the A1 variable except now we're gonna make the appropriate substitution. So we're gonna have B, capital B2, oh, not capital C, <laughs> there's no C variable, little c or epsilon. All right, and this grammar, and so this is the right, or one of the main possible grammars for this particular language. Now, what we need to answer is whether this grammar is ambiguous, and the short answer is it always is. And how do I know that it, that's true? Because I've done a video um, on the channel that shows that this language is what is called inherently ambiguous, which means that every single grammar that you could ever make for this thing is ambiguous. So I know this one is, but it's just we got to show it. All right, so then what does ambiguous mean? So remember that ambiguous is about the grammar and not the language. So here the grammar is ambiguous if we have, if there exists some string W with at least two uh, leftmost derivations, or parse trees is the um, is exactly the same if we say parse tree here. All right, so then what do we do here? Well, um, what string can we derive in two different ways? Well, if we look at the language here, we see that there are two different parts to it, and there's some overlap. So if we take any string at all, where we have the same number of, of A's, B's, and C's, so the same number, then the left side must be able to generate it and the right side must be able to generate it because it satisfies both of these. 
And so because these two halves have no variables in common, that means that they must be different leftmost derivations. But let's actually uh, give a proof of that. So actually, that will show that there are infinitely many strings. And, and actually, there must be. Um, there must be an infinite number of strings that have two mo or more leftmost derivations slash parse trees. All right, so let's just pick any string that has uh, an equal number of, of A's, B's, and C's, so it satisfies both of these. And one of them is the empty string. You could have picked any other one if you wish. So let's look at the empty string. So what is the parse tree if we went down this side? Well, that would mean going down the S1 route. So we could start at S, go down to S1, and then that has to make A1, B1. Those are the, that's the only possibility. So A1, B1. And then now, if we have the empty string, well, uh, both of these must go to empty directly because any other rule would correspond to actually making something. And then if we went down the other side, we would have S up here going down to S2, and then A2, B2, and both, all of those would go to empty. And you're going to get something very similar if you consider any non-empty string that satisfies both of these. So if you make a grammar that has an or of something, and then you make the grammar for each one of these and then do union of the two, any string that lies in the intersection of the two is going to be it is going to have two different at least leftmost derivations because as long as the variables have nothing in common like we do here. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about context-free grammars and parse trees in the comments down below, as well as anything about <laughs> ambiguous grammars. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.